low carb and keto diets put your body in a state that encourages fat burning. But is low carb slash keto the only way to burn fat? It's a good question and we're gonna look into that today. All right, so the quick short answer to that question is no. Uh, you can lose weight in other ways other than low carb or keto, but you will have to restrict something or increase something. In fact, we will go over four different ways that you can get your body to burn fat in this video. But we're talking about keto in our title, so let's go over that real quick. So if we're talking about a keto range of nutrients, we're talking about it at least 65% of your daily calories coming from fat um, and less than 10% coming from uh, Carb. carbs. And uh, protein and protein will be right in the middle there. Low carb, we're gonna talk more about 50 to 60% of your daily calories coming from fat and uh, more like 20 to 25 coming from carbohydrates. If we go into the low fat range, well, there's, there's no great standard, but we often see low fat diets having greater than 50% of your daily calories coming from carbohydrates and down to about 15% coming from fat. So those were the diets, this low fat model was the diet that we followed for decades and decades and decades. And it made a lot of sense on paper. The reason is because gram for gram, fat has nine calories per gram, uh, whereas protein or carbohydrates have only four calories per gram. So gram for gram, fat is twice the caloric value of those other two nutrients. Right, and those are approximations. You know, it's close yeah. to nine, yeah, close right. to four. <laughs> it's, you know, it's nothing's ever exact. Mm -hmm. But that brings us to our first um, way of losing body fat, right? Restricting calories. Mm -hmm. And if you go low fat, you're automatically cutting out that higher, highest calorie nutrient, you know, so you can cut those calories down quite a bit. Um, you know, and I will say, this is what we've kind of all grown up with, you know, since, uh, you know, decades ago, um, you know, low fat became the thing. Coincidentally, that was also the time that the obesity rate, in, at least in the United States, just began to skyrocket. So it didn't make a lot of sense. It was very incongruent. No, but I mean, it does, it is certainly, we can't refute the, the fact that if you restrict your calories, you will be able to lose weight. And the opposite is also true. You can overeat either carbohydrates or fat and gain body fat. Uh, we always talk about insulin and, um, being a primary driver for fat storage, which it certainly is, but insulin's only going to increase when you're increasing your carbohydrate intake. Um, if you're eating excess fat, uh, it's not dependent on insulin to get into fat storage, but if it's in excess, it can go into fat storage. Yeah, uh, if you're eating 5,000 calories a day of fat and you're only burning 2,000 calories a day, pretty good bet you're gonna get fat. Yeah. So the second on our list of ways to burn body fat is by restricting the amount of time you eat. Right, intermittent fasting. So if you don't wanna do restriction number one, which is restricting your calories intentionally, a great way to get the same effect is from intermittent fasting. Uh, one of the reasons that intermittent fasting is so effective is it, that it does cause a natural lowering of your calorie intake. And there's many reasons for this. Some of it might be that if you're starting your fast earlier in the evening, you're not eating the bedtime snacks that tend to be very high in calories or the alcohol that you might have in the, in the evening. But it also is going to uh, stabilize the your insulin and blood sugar, and that's going to help put your body in a state that will burn fat. So we have two already, right? So we can burn body fat by either restricting our calorie intake, or we can restrict the number of hours in a day that we eat. Right. But there is, of course, then another way that we can, thing that we can restrict and lose weight, and that is a specific nutrient. Right, so that's where we come to the low fat versus low carb debate, right? Um, and we've all done the low fat diets uh, in the 80s and the 90s, early, you know. They were like really something to suffer through. I mean, they were, they were not enjoyable, at least in my opinion. I mean, having a salad with no salad dressing. Um, 
You know, that, that just doesn't do it. But in the past decade or so, there's been a lot of research that has like pushed towards low carb. Mm -hmm. Now, there was some previous research that kind of looked at low fat versus low carb, but there's a little bit of an issue with that. Well, all right. So uh, there, there's no doubt that you can go into the uh, scientific literature and find comparisons of a low fat and a low carb diet that have uh, very similar outcomes as far as weight loss. The challenge with those earlier studies is how they broke down the diets by macronutrients. So a lot of those studies, the, if you really get into them, you'll see that the carbohydrate uh, were restricted to like 30% and they were calling that a low carb diet. You know, one, one study, for instance, um, they looked at a low carb, high fat diet, but they called it at 30% of your daily calories from carbohydrates and 45% from fat. Now, most of us would not consider that a low carb, high fat diet. Uh, but yet then they used that as the comparison for a low, a low fat diet and they found that their results were similar. Now, in more recent years, we are seeing studies come out that are showing low carb diets to be more effective at fat loss. And the key to those studies is how they are breaking down the macronutrients. Uh, in these newer studies, we are seeing that they are actually using a, a low carb diet where the carbohydrates are restricted to less than 10% uh, compared to a higher fat diet, which is, you know, has the a uh, higher carb, low, low fat diet, uh, which we'll throw up on the screen here. Right. So you really have to look at research with kind of a trained eye. You need to read the research and not just go by the title because the way these researchers define something, um, you know, could totally skew, you know, the results that they're getting. Um, you know, this, this whole low carb, you know, thing, you know, they're calling something low carb. It's really not low carb. So. We have now gone over three ways that you can, three things that you can restrict in order to burn more fat. You can restrict your calories, you can restrict the number of hours that you eat, and you can restrict a certain nutrient. But there's also a flip side of this, right? So you could increase your physical activity to a point where you would burn more fat. Right. Now, unfortunately, we're talking about intense physical activity. Um, to really get a caloric burn that's going to have some kind of impact on your weight and your weight loss. You know, we're talking about professional athletes, professional cyclists, uh, other professional athletes who spend, you know, the, the majority of their day, you know, in this activity or, or being very physical. Um, you know, most of us, you know, as, as, no matter how, you know, I want to think how hard I work out or how hard you work out, that really plays a pretty small role because we can't, we just can't do it for six, seven, eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if when I was on my bicycle for three hours, you know, it didn't result in a, a huge calorie burn. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm riding a Tour de France, well, if I could ride the Tour de France, you know, I'd be eating 10,000 calories a day, you know, and m most of that, you know, they eat white rice, mm -hmm. but they're on their bikes for six, seven, eight hours a day going up steep inclines, Yeah. Um, you know, and they're thin, you know, they don't have a whole lot of body fat, mm -hmm. you know, that they can rely on yeah. because they're burning all that off. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no doubt that regular physical activity is beneficial to our health and should be part of your routine. Uh, but if you're looking at it as a primary driver for um, fat loss, it's, it's going to be hard to tip that scale, tip that into the, into your plus column. Yeah. It plays a pretty small role. Yeah. Really. So uh, to answer our question, is keto the only way for your body to burn fat? No, but I'm going to say that, you know, having sampled the other diets, mm -hmm. um, that it is the best way. It is the easiest way. It's the most long lasting way. Um, and it's the most satisfying. I'm, and, and I can, maybe I'm just speaking for me, but um, yeah, uh, 
Again, I'm not going to have a salad with no dressing on it. Right, <laughs> right. That seems to be the, the theme of our of our talk. Yeah. Uh, well, we've we we have we've been through both, uh, and we would certainly side with low carb, high fat because it is very satisfying, much easier to stick with. And we know probably a lot of you have had the same experience, but hopefully that this helps kind of bring some things into perspective for you. Um, hey, if you want somewhere to start, we have a, a lot of free resources. One we'll point to is our uh, free starter kit, so you can download that if you'd like to have a guide to get started. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next video. See ya.